Welcome to You Should Know, a series about the things you should have been taught in high school, but weren't. In each episode, we'll dive into a topic that's important to understand and easy to implement into your life. We'll talk to experts, break down complex ideas, and give you the information that you need to make informed decisions. So whether you're looking to learn something new or just want to stay up to date on the latest news, You Should Know is the place for you. So give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and let's get started. We're going to get started. I am Janae Hicks with the Ellis County, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. I am the Family Community Health Agent. So I want to have our guest introduce herself today and tell us a little bit about her. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Lakshmi Mahadevan, and I am the mental health and well-being specialist and associate professor at the Department of Family and Community Health in um, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. I'm headquartered in College Station, Texas. Yeah. So if it's cool with you, we're just going to hop in and talk about some mental health topics, especially related to the holidays. Okay. Sounds excellent. All right. So what are some common challenges that people face in a relationship to their mental health during the holidays? So I certainly feel like the pressures to have a good time sort of increases. Uh, people have these expectations like this is going to be the best reunion ever or the best Christmas ever, or I want to have the best crisp, uh, presents there or the food there or whatever you would sort of associate it, associate with enjoyment, the pressure to have that may, may increase. Um, other things that may be something we don't think of uh, until say um, it's time is budgeting for all these. Um, so financial concerns, financial strains might increase as well, uh, potentially starting the first couple of weeks before Thanksgiving, because then you have extra expenses and things like that already. And then you add to that uh, budgeting for gifts and purchases or travel, for example, or having family over, therefore you have more um, grocery shopping that you might have to do. And um, maybe you pay for hotels for somebody to come and stay with you. We, we, a lot of things that we didn't anticipate earlier in the year. Um, the third issue, I think, unfortunately, following the pandemic or even just grief or loss, um, you may have lost someone this year, dear, who would normally be at the table or would normally come to a gathering. Now there's that empty chair, that empty feeling that's left behind. There might be some grieving, some loss some um, uh, some mourning that might have to be part of this whole process. Um, oh, this is not going, this is going to be a very different Christmas. So this is going to be a very different celebration because they're not there. So there's that kind of, you've lost that whole, um, that warmth that somebody else brought. And so there's this real grief there that I think people have to prepare for. Um, we self-care kind of goes out the windows. Lots of people just get so bogged down in whatever timelines, deadlines they've set for themselves, whatever it is. I have to get all my gifts by this time. All the decorations have to be done and all the invitations have to be sent out or any other even purchases for myself or others um, or what I'm going to wear at the New Year's party. It just gets very, um, we get very time driven and therefore uh, we really just uh, set ourselves some, some very um, artificial deadlines that put a lot of pressure on us um, and therefore extra, like just make the whole year more stressful and less enjoyable. Yeah, for sure. I think one of the other things with budgeting, you talked about budgeting money, also budgeting time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We get so bogged down with all the things that we feel like we need to get done. Yeah, and I think unfortunately that also might result in lack of sleep. We go to sleep later, we wake up earlier. Uh, we end up not having our typical um, time that we might even have, say, oh, well, I must spend 10 minutes drinking coffee before I wake up the family. That seems to kind of become more, everybody's excitement level goes, and that means that uh, melatonin is, <laughs> is at a yeah. low, uh, adrenaline is running higher, and that also makes people a little bit extra active, um, not in a good way. Uh, it just makes everybody restless is the word I think would apply. And therefore, the excitement builds and, and sleep is one of the things that kind of goes out the window. Um, but uh, a budgeting for time is an absolutely important way to put it, because we truly just do not put in time uh, for everything. We just pile it on, maybe into a regular work day. So you work eight hours and then pile on a lot of other things that you don't usually have more than 
Um, you don't usually do on a, a regular basis, but also because you just that means it just cuts down on everything else. Say your child goes to bed at 8, 8, 8 p.m. Usually, but because you're not there to put them to bed, you know, their sleep time changes and those kinds of things because you're busy uh, trying to get ready for the holidays. So, yeah, I, I think that's a great um, a great addendum there to think about budgeting for both money and time. Yeah. So how significant is it going to be for individuals to pay attention to their mental health and their mental well-being around the holidays? You know, I think that the interesting thing is we don't ever think about our mental health um, unless we are forced to, right? Unless we have like some sort of actual uh, crisis or some kind of consideration. Like, for example, um, a huge, either it could be a, um, a loss, personal loss, or it could be something that happens, a hurricane or or I mean, uh, just to be more current, Matthew Perry died. And so you could have a lot of reactions to those kinds of things. Um, so we tend to not think about mental health until something like that happens. Now, what I want us to remember is that mental health is with us 24 um, seven. We can either have it be a, um, a good aspect of our uh, well-being, or it could be a difficult aspect of our well-being. And ultimately, uh, mental health um, sort of ebbs and flows. If you think of the heart monitor and the spikes, yeah. I think of mental health having a very similar. So if you did an EEG with our mental health, you'll find ourselves spiking and ebbing and flowing. And it's because we are reacting emotionally uh, to situations. And then uh, that actually increases um, um, our um, our brain function um, in various ways. So I think of it as functioning from back here, which is our flight fight fear mode, which is called amygdala. Uh, but we need to get ourselves from back here, which is very emotional, uh, very impulsive to the frontier. Um, unfortunately, that's why it's even more important during the holidays to pay more attention to your mental health, because if you're, you're going to be a lot more operating from back here, because you're just going 24 seven, we're a little bit more um, and we really don't give ourselves the time to think, um, you know, ironically, the stop and smell the roses aspect of it becomes even more important now uh, and than ever before. Um, so I would say, yes, um, that is important. Another thing is it gets darker faster. Um, you know, the day ends, our sleep cycles usually go a little bit haywire after daylight saving times ends. So we've just got a lot of extra challenges that we didn't think about the, would, would be a mental health challenge prior to the holiday time. So um, starting, I would say, October 15th, I think we should take Halloween into account too, because you might have some um, things that you do then that cause similar stresses. Um, so just think about um, mental health as something that you start watching for. How are we reacting to emotions? Um, I ask everybody to rank, um, sort of not rank it, but rate it. Um, I started five because nobody can ever be at a zero feeling about anything. So five through 11 and how bad or how good is this feeling? And I don't want us to struggle with words and emotions for fe and feelings. Uh, vocabulary is sometimes difficult to describe, all, but we can describe it with a number. I really feel a 15. I really feel a 25 or I feel 11. Those are days in which you want to be checking in with yourself and doing extra self-care uh, because that day is your mental health is definitely spiking and you're needing yourself to kind of recenter what I call refuel um, and uh, rebuild uh, your, resist, uh, your resistance and your resilience um, and come back uh, stronger because that spike is going to be caused again, but maybe the spike doesn't have to be not that, that tall or that pointed, so... Yeah, no, that's awesome. So we've talked about how significant it is. What mm -hmm. are some challenges some people might face in relationship to their mental health during the holidays? You know, I really think that there's a lot more social challenges that come in play here. You know, we we truly feel like, I mean, there might be some family members that you have to, un, you have to invite just because of social obligations. Or there might be some friends you have to reconnect with. Or there might be some social situations that aren't. I don't know, but most people, I don't know how comfortable they could be in these suddenly these party like situations where you have to mingle and you have to, um, you know, show up. And um, so I, 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 I'm concerned that there might be a lot of social challenges that we don't usually face during the year. Um, generally, another uh, concern I have is the fact that we might have a lot of uh, expectations of ourselves as to um 
And the truth of the matter is we get very uh, women and I'm guessing men too, just get very body conscious, right? I mean, you, you know, they, we talk about the summer body, but there's also the winter body, right? You want to be in that, uh, you want to dress in that very um, becoming way for New Year's Eve or something, but then you overeat. And so therefore the dress doesn't fit. And so you add yourself these, these extra stresses that are, not really. I mean, it really just is. And then there's all this the guilt of overeating, over celebrating, over indulging, um, all of those. Um, uh, alcohol consumption might go up. And, and um, in the name of celebration, we might choose to do things that we think are celebratory, but actually just undermine our um, undermine some of our uh, biological patterns that would allow us to relax. We just actually get more um, I think it just exacerbates and, and uh, things like um, those feelings from back here get more, it just gets a little bit sharper emotional. So I would say um, those are things we don't anticipate and we tend to, uh, but I also say we have a lot of opportunities during the year where similar things happen. So what we should do is how to be self-care through that. Say a wedding was coming up and you were wanting to fit into a dress for that, or say you were going to meet a family member over zoom call anyway and just find out what helped you get through that and then use that for this time you know so be a bit more don't take everything as new it's not new it's happened before you survived it then what did you do how did you self-care before and how are you now going to be able to self-care now I think the more informed we are about our own um, abilities to self-care the more important informed we are about what works for us what does not work for us Let's put those things together. So say, for example, you like to walk, right? You're the kind who wants to walk it off. You want to get out of the house, but you're, it's not giving you that much self-care right now. It feels like, okay, I like you to even rank or rate that. So if you're from a five through 11 and you're still not getting that joyous sort of bouncing back feeling, um, you're like at a five there, you want to increase that, then go back and say, all right, maybe I should walk with a friend. And that makes it, you know, a little bit more joyous. So adjust your self-care maybe you want to do a meditation while you're walking maybe you want to add a breathing exercise maybe you want to um so go back to your self-care plan and adjust it um admit that it's no longer the best way to self-care and then also say yeah you know when i do that wine i don't feel the best or when i meet that individual i don't feel the best but when i meet her and that other person is there it goes better you know those kinds of things just do a little bit of self-assessment and see what works and then uh, and put what I call as a toolbox of best practices when it comes to my mental health and how I can take care of my, take care better of myself. Main thing I tell everybody, self-care is not selfish. There is no reason why you shouldn't still have your me time in the mornings or you still shouldn't put aside shopping time just for yourself or not always be thinking about others. And even if, if for example, if people ask you, what kind of gift would you like? Take that seriously. I mean, it's about your joy too. I mean, you know, so yeah, I, hey, listen, I want this. Just tell people, be assertive about it. That way you can be joyously looking forward to the gift. Even if the person is not the best favorite person of yours, at least they would be somebody who would be, you've asked for the gift and you're looking forward to seeing them because they're going to bring you what you asked for. And that kind of thing is a good thing. So build up these sort of positive things around and 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 look forward to new memories. If not anything else, just look forward to new memories. Don't dread what's coming up, but just look forward to, okay, maybe you'll see what I learned this year. You know, um, you might be surprised at things that you might learn about this family member who you've been dreading for this long, but then actually they turn out to be um, an amazing individual. They have a great story or they have something that you can then take away from and say, yeah, you know, I understand them better now and I'm willing to host them again or honor uh, what they bring to the table uh, or vice versa. I don't mind being invited by them now somewhere and then hang out with them. So let's just try to see how we can reframe some of these stories so that we don't go in dreading it every year. Um, we go in knowing what to expect and then doing self-care for the parts that repeat themselves that may not be the best. Um, so yeah, that makes well, sense. Would you say that managing expectations Mm -hmm. is a part of taking care yeah. of yeah and actually I think we don't do enough uh, of a uh, uh, work that knows what our expectations even are we don't really spend a lot we just expect but we don't know what we just put dot 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 and then, and I think we are I think it behooves us to sit down and say all right um this starting October 15th through I would say January 10th 
let's put it that way, okay? During this time, um, I want these things to happen. I want to feel like this went well. I want to be happy with the decorations. I want to be happy with the um, with the gifts I'm buying. I'm I'm going to set this budget. Um, I like um, I suggested earlier uh, to somebody that you might even want to ask people this year to give you gift cards that you only spend next year for gifts, and that way you are automatically limited to the budget that is on the gift card. Now, if you're lucky, it might be $250, but if it's not, it's $50 then stay with $50 and use $50 for groceries, you know, that kind of thing. So you just give yourself a budget that, or I even like the idea, you remember that old Christmas club idea, just buy yourself a gift card yourself that you invest in. Okay, $150, whatever is on this gift, this gift I'm giving myself, that's all I'm going to spend on the holidays. And then give yourself that kind of expectation only. So you don't take any other cards with you when you go shopping, or you don't put anything on Amazon that isn't that gift card number. You're only spending this much amount because that's all you're going to budget and you stay with it. Nothing else exists. That's it. That kind of uh, logic would be very helpful. Um, also manage your expectations about people. People may not have changed or people may not have, um, but, and also manage, okay, how much do I end up thinking, okay, so-and-so is not going to get along with so-and-so or so-and-so is not going to be, or they're going to say this story again. True, but then you already know that's going to happen. So expect how, learn about your own reactions and expect similar reactions from yourself and then pre-prepare. Now, there are new problems or new occurrences go in with the expectation that, okay, I'm going to try to keep an open mind. I'm going to see whatever else happens, and then I'm going to take a lesson learned from it. Um, or, and also give yourself permission not to do it next year. I don't want to invite this person next year. I don't want to have this confusion next year. I don't want to give this gift next year. I don't want to uh, be the one to bring whatever dish next year because it just causes me too much stress. Fair enough. Uh, all those are excellent uh, lessons to learn and then decide when to say no. That is another important thing. Um, you can either do that now or you can do that later or do it next year. It does not matter, but learn when you wanted to say no and did not, and now you want to next year. So the expectation I think you want to set for yourself is I'm going to go in with, uh, with, the, with the eyes and ears for lessons to be learned and then um, not outcomes, but at least lessons to be learned that I, that I wish would be better, um, that'll go better next year, so. Yeah. So we talked about uh, managing our expectations a little bit. How are some other ways that individuals can prioritize their mental health around this kind of stressful time for some people? I, you know, I came across a quote and I always forget who said it um, because I heard him say it at a conference and I've always appreciated how literal it is. But it says you cannot light the way for others if you burn yourself out, you know, or your bulb is burnt out. And that is where we operate from most of the time. At the very least, our bulb is flickering <laughs> often. Mm -hmm. And so I would certainly say that we, it's okay, first of all, to prioritize our mental health. Um, like I said, self-care is not selfish. In fact, it's sensible. And in fact, people rely on you to be healthy. They rely on you to be the one to hold it together. Um, and um, if you are not giving yourself that, that first of all, giving yourself that same value that other people give you um, and giving yourself the same sense of self-worth, um, then I think um, that is us setting ourselves up for uh, our expectations to be let down or uh, the feeling not to be so happy or the grief to be more, uh, those kinds of things. The negativity goes higher and the positivity goes lower because we haven't um, adjusted correctly our mental health to learn all these lessons. So I would say absolutely prioritize your mental health. And I don't see any reason why you have to wait until, like I said, don't wait for the crisis. Just, you know, um, so what I'm going to do is if it's okay with you, I'm going to teach us all a breathing technique. And if you want to practice with me, yeah. it is something that um, I want you all, since this is audio, you can follow my voice um, and then uh, maybe record one for yourself, say using your phone's voice recorder, uh, just uh, record that um, that uh, number count for yourself and then listen to yourself and then breathe accordingly. Um, but that allows us to start now. You don't have to wait. Uh, whenever we need to do extra self-care, 
even now we have stresses, right? It doesn't have to be holiday related. We can start practicing our breathing technique now so that we can manage our mental health as we go in with more of a practice and um, something knowing that this, hey, yeah, the, maybe the breathing will help me. Maybe this other technique will help me now and we're already practicing it. So, um, so I'm going to ask you to close your eyes if you wish. Um, and then you can either use your mouth or your nose depending on what's most comfortable to you. But you take a, a breath in to the count of four. And then I'll ask you to hold it for a couple of seconds. And then I'm going to ask you to let it out to a count of eight. Okay, so deep breath in, hold, and then um, exhale as long as you can to the count of eight. Okay, all right, we can get started. Deep breath in. One, two, three, four. Hold, hold, out. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's four, hold eight. Um, when you feel like of 11, or eight, or 10, somewhere there, I would say take maybe five or six because one is not usually enough. But what we've basically done is taken our uh, oxygen and moved it from here to here. We've lowered our blood pressure. This is our frontal cortex area where we do a lot of our thinking processing. Um, and so this allows us to, okay, if, if, if we spike, whether that's anger or sadness or fear or grief or any of those, anything in between, then we get, get back to the thinking. Now in the thinking, I want you to now think things like, okay, this is a thought. Um, am I physically tense? Then you want to flex your shoulders and just, you know, like move your hands around if you wish. And so, okay, then untense, whatever you feel is tense. Then you want to also say, okay, what is this thought? Is it is there evidence for this thought? Um, is this a fact? Um, is this real? Uh, am I just making this up to myself? Um, and then um, do I have time to process it because it is important or it's not important? So let's get rid of it. Let's do that kind of analyzing with the thought because that causes us to catastrophize. And so we need to catch that early and stop that thought from becoming you know, something that's a mountain of issues. Um, and then once you process that thought, we can say, okay, I need to revisit this. So table it like you do in meetings. Okay, we're going to go back to it another time or say it doesn't need to be revisited. So it's done. But at least you're not um, fest learn letting our mind kind of linger, wallow, fester over this instead of the negativity. Instead, we have moved on to, okay, cannot be dealt with or can be dealt with, but move on. But give yourself that cognitive sort of break and say, is this true? And if it's not true, why am I getting myself all worked up about it? Um, that is a, a, a process that will follow the breathing. Um, and then I ask you to extra self-care, uh, pet your dog, talk to your family friend, um, move outside when the weather is nice. I like to take my, I personally like to take my shoes off and, you know, touch the grass, make it a little bit more, uh, I mean, get my feet in the grass, get it a little bit more kinesthetic. So it adds to the richness of the experience, um, you know, have a coffee or a tea, um, any of those um, would be very helpful. Uh, recently at the Texas Extension Education uh, Association conference, uh, they spoke about aromatherapy. So there might be some things you could do um, that you could use some scentsy or some candles or some essential oils that give, give you that kind of smell that would be um relaxing, uh, whatever you can afford doesn't have to be unaffordable. That's why the breathing is great because it's free and it's just something you don't have to get, you know, some sort of um, extra help for. Um, when you pre-record it, send it as a gift to all your family members. Everybody can learn to breathe with you. You can do it as a little game. You do Christmas games or, you know, gatherings, but you have games. So why don't you just do let's all breathe together game, you know? Um, I also like to have good conversations. If you're mourning somebody, um, maybe you can have a, let's have a little memorial um, kind of um, uh, time for them. Let's all bring up our best memories of this person. So we're not just grieving them, but we're celebrating that they were in our lives before. Um, so these are little things you can plan for now ahead of ha time and then manage your mental health in the meanwhile. Um, so that when you move forward into the actual holiday time, these are things you already have in place. Um, I also like you all to think about the fact that you're not so different from me. So uh, let me ask you, um, Danae, do you have a brother? I have a sister. You have a sister. I, so do I. 
we do not know we had that in common. That's yeah. why I could I could tell you what Danae is not. I mean, she's from a different different. Um, she's not at all like me. But no, we have a sister in common. So what is it that you have in common with these people that you're going to be spending time with? Uh, we are all human to begin with, and so let's plan there, and then rest of it, let's just find out. You know, you might be surprised. If you open your mind to new curiosities and forget the history of it, but just say, all right, what's happening, you know? And even questions, I don't mind you asking questions like how are you dealing with the grief and the loss of somebody? Or um, what has happened to you this year that you feel has been triumphant? Or uh, all of us tell us how, you know, how did you all, uh, what is it that you did this year that you're proud of? Those are all great ways to break the ice with family members and set it on a positive tone. So you can start doing those now, you know, you can just have, um, or you can give people warnings. Hey, we're going to do these cute little things during the holidays when you all come be prepared because I'm going to ask you all to tell me a story about something awesome. <laughs> so that way, everybody is not like feeling like, oh, they're put on the spot. And no, I haven't done anything this year. And then they make them feel, no, if they want to contribute, they're already ready to. And if they're not going to contribute, they stay quiet. They're ready to go. Um, things like that. I also like you to think That's about, really <laughs> yeah, what I call is creating resilience moments, Okay. So right now in this moment, you're feeling stressed. Fair enough. It doesn't even have to be the holiday, right? We're just going through. So get yourself out of this moment to the next. So I like to use, um, so for example, you could play a game on your phone um, just so you can, you know, if you get through uh, whatever your game of choice is, oh, I got through that level. So you give yourself a little bit of success. I, I also like to challenge, tell people to do little vocabulary challenges. Um, because we, I, I, so I like them to look up, say, tongue twisters on the internet and then try to say that out loud. And whenever you feel successful at saying that, then that failure moment or that stressed moment feels better. You're like, okay, I can say this tongue twister. I'm good, you know, then go back to whatever concern you have. Um, and I also like to look at your, make your calendar that geographical, I mean, excuse me, that, um, uh, uh, that calendar that's electronic. I don't know why it's a geographical, what I meant is electronic calendar that pops up reminders. And in that reminder, along with every meeting, along with shopping, along with all your other things, put in self-care, whatever that is. Walk with Danae, um, feed my dog, um, have a conversation with a friend, or just say self-care, whatever that is. But put that half an hour, 45 minutes in. Uh, or put breathe or any of those and let your room phone remind you, hey, it's coming up. It's time for self-care and actually self-care during that time. Don't lie to yourself that it is self-care, but do it, you know, whatever it is. And if there is self-care that includes, you know, certain plannings, then go ahead and do that. Oh, yeah, I love having coffee with Danae. So I'm going to make sure that I put her on my calendar for two weeks from now. Or um, I particularly like having coffee with Danae. That's another reason that would be better self-care. I mean, don't, okay, not just having coffee with a friend, but with the neck, right? So those of, oh yeah, bring, it doesn't, I am, you know, Lisa doesn't bring that much joy anymore, but Danae does. That's fair, you know, to use those kinds of things. So some tips I think that might help you. Yeah. One thing that you said that was really, really powerful to me. Uh, I'm a mom, I have a three-year-old. So you said to give yourself the value that other people give you. I think as yeah. a mom, we get so tired and we yeah. have these high expectations that we want the husband to have a great holiday and the family to have a great holiday and the kids to just have this magical experience. And yeah. the minute that those expectations aren't met, we're like, I failed. Yeah. And yeah. in their minds, like they still had a great time. They loved the yeah. presents, the cookies, whatever it yeah. was. Yeah. And I loved, I'm going to live by that yeah. now. I loved it. Giving yeah. myself the value that other people give me is. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. Give yourself the self-worth that other people give you also. Um, I, I appreciate that, that you reiterated that. And you're right, especially in any role, uh, even as a friend, we tend to devalue ourselves. Um, I think your next thought would be instead of saying I failed, you say what evidence is there for it? Is it true? Uh, yeah. Is it a fact that somebody say to me that I failed? <laughs> because you're right. Nobody actually has said it. So this is our own expectations and standards that we have failed, not anybody else's. And that's our uh, sort of superficial. We just make others an excuse and we think that. But actually, in reality, it's our own thinking that makes us catastrophize something that isn't real. So Yeah. Okay. I have one last question. And we've okay. already touched on it with the breathing, but do you have any specific activities or practices that you would recommend individuals that are looking to take care of their mental health to do during the holidays? 
Yeah, um, I think um, it's a, it's very powerful for us to realize how much of our physical self gets involved in all this. So let's start getting more uh, cognizant. So for example, um, I've noticed that when I drive, my jaws are clenched. I just clench my jaws. So that means I decided, okay, when I'm driving, I'm probably tense. So I'm noticing, okay, I'm tense here. I'm tense here. So my jaws are clenched. So, you know, like on purpose, unclench is what I call it. Clench and unclench. Now you could be clenching and unclenching. Um, uh, you start with your jaw, but you don't realize. So what I would say is there are those uh, muscle relaxation things, but they're kind of they don't always work for people. So I'd rather you did not do that. Instead, if you wish to, you could do something like this where you would um, like close your eyes tight, 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 and, and really just take everything about your muscles in your face and make it very tight, right? You do that, you automatically find yourself getting your shoulders are coming up, your fists are coming up. So you're finding yourself clenching a lot of things, even though you started with your face. And then when you let go, you end up letting go all of it. Okay, so that is a physical reaction. So that's where the flexing the shoulders comes, the opening and closing of your fingers come. If you're older, you could be doing these kinds of things. It'll help you with, you know, any other, um, uh, you know, conditions you might have um, to flex sort of like physical therapy type of uh, things. You could curl your toes and then uncurl your toes. You could get up and go stretch straight backwards, make your back very, very straight, and then go back to your normal posture. All of those are great physical ways to um, let go and unclench. Um, the mental one was the one where I asked you all to think of what's called um, catching that thought and asking it questions. Um, also catching that thought, but then making sure you understand, okay, what am I feeling right now with this thought? Am I feeling sad? Am I upset? Am I angry? Am I frustrated? And then um, where's the physical tension? Uh, make a note of that. Um, and then um, and then use, after you've got that whole sort of process done, then you come back and say, all right, I need to self-care a little bit more out of this. So it's called stop. It's um, stop and take stock. Um, think about what is going on. Um, and then you uh, proceed after you've got that sort of, um, you've understood what's happening with you, you proceed. But when you proceed, you add a couple of things to that to self-care. So you could do extra breathing, you could add a beverage, tea, coffee, those kinds of things. You could, um, you know, pet, uh, you could hug your child. All of those are good things to add. But when you proceed, I don't want you to come out thinking, okay, the problem has gone away, but at least now it gives you that fresh perspective because you've sent oxygen to this front of the brain, part of the brain. Um, another practice that I really like is called accelerate to decelerate. <laughs> and um, that is something where I've mentioned, people have mentioned to me when they get very stressed, their heart starts racing. Um, so I ask people to maybe jump on, jump if you can, or a jumping jack or walk really fast if that's what's possible. So you're accelerating your heart rate, but not from a psychological reasoning, but from a physical reasoning. And you'll notice when the heart rate goes back down after your exercise is complete, the psychological reason is also kind of taken care of. Okay, so that's why exercise is often told uh, uh, as a, uh, but I know people put all kinds of pressure. I don't want you to put pressure on yourself to join a gym or anything. This is just um, walking on, on, you can just march on at, at place and that way you're increasing the um, heart rate uh, in a good way. Uh, it isn't because of stress that your heart is racing. It is because of the physical reasoning. So those are some quick little tips that I would love for people to be able to use um, when they, I also have a handout at some point if you want to just uh, to give those out to people. Um, and um, that would be uh, these four techniques that sort of detailed for you. And then you can just look at that information or just pick something and adapt it for yourself. You know, um, whatever self-care you do, if you feel comfortable enough, teach family members, teach your kids, teach your uh, friends and um, not in a, and not in, with a way of, you know, telling them to how to, you know, I'm fixing your life for, you know, it's just like, this works for me. It might work for you. Or do you want to do it together? I love doing it together. I think that's a great thing that you could all do. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you have anything else you want to add? You've covered so much. <laughs> um, I, um, I, I really just think, oh, I think it's important this year, I, instead of making a journal of, um, I think if you're a journaler, that's fantastic, okay? But if you want to, in this journal, this time, go ahead and put lessons learned uh, about managing how I manage my emotions. That would be a good one. Um, what beliefs were debunked? <laughs> that would be a good one. What is no longer true uh, is a good one. 
um, this family member was truly comforting and I want them in my life. That's a good uh, lesson to learn. Um, this, this occasion was truly comforting. This gift was what I wanted. This is how the interaction with my family went and I really want this to happen again. All of those are great things that we could journal. Another thing in there is a self-care plan. I mean, there's no harm in actually giving yourself a list of things I love to do that make me feel cared for and I do for myself, not so much what that you expect others to because others may not come in time <laughs> is what I want you to do is make yourself a timely self-care plan. And in that self-care plan, include a nice combination of activities. Could be spiritual, could be uh, physical, could be intellectual. Very, for example, you say, oh, you know, there's this new project coming up at work. I'd like to be involved there because I like that challenge and it allows me to de-stress better. Um, you know, those are good things to think of. Um, emotional supports, um, I could, you know, I might have to think about therapy this year or at least self-caring in a way that's a little bit more, um, um, healing. So you might want to go for yoga or you might want to plan for um, really some kind of uh, enhanced uh, approach to your self-care. Um, that does include spending some money, so budget for that. Those kinds of things I would say include in your uh, plan. So yeah, so in 2024, you start not with resolutions that um, inevitably you set yourself up for as so high a standard that you may never meet, but just a self-care plan, you know, just some things that I would want to do every every other week or every other day. And you put it on your put it on your calendar. And the self-care plan, you'll be surprised at how easy it is. If you don't call it exercising to lose weight, but exercising to de-stress would help you. Um, breathing to de-stress would be helpful versus oh yoga to have better posture. No, none of those, you know, because that's more pressure we can put ourselves uh, for outcomes that sometimes don't work and may not work. And then we put ourselves so much pressure that we don't actually then achieve the outcome because we are drained from within. Instead, do some other things that are what I call obtainable, successful things um, that you can truly do. And then you can say the next, the previous day, I did that. I did my breathing at least once. Great. I drank water at least half of what I wanted to drink. I accomplished that way. Keep a checklist of what you do feel you did don't forget your successes that's the other thing you know don't keep saying I didn't do enough that's what we often say instead just say this much I did do you know so the glass is more half full than always us perceiving it as half empty yeah that's very much a frame of mind thing yeah exactly all right well thank you so much I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to come talk to us about mental health and the holidays because it's always a touchy topic and it can be something that we don't like talking about a lot so thanks for joining us for that I do and I do want to just be uh, let people know to do a little bit more of a um, self-assessment on what I think about mental health what are my fears about mental health what stigmas do I perceive in myself or others about mental health and um uh, find ways to start those safe conversations. And so at Texas A&M Agra of Extension Service, we offer different ways and programs that will allow you to do that for free in your county. So uh, contact you or me or through you, me, and we can try to get some programs out to your people who are getting wanting to do this early, do it in a preventive way, be proactive about it, um, and also then find the things that do provide them support like family members, like peers, like colleagues, like um, your, um, and people who share your culture and your lived experiences will help you identify your support network. So next year at this time, you don't feel alone either. Um, mm -hmm. Even if you don't have direct family, you might find yourself being surrounded by people who truly want what you want and uh, are supportive of what you want. Yeah, sometimes friends can be the best family, huh? Correct. And um, it is, and and also, again, it's up to us to choose the things that we understand what we want and then choose it in the way that's most helpful to us. And also be okay with when sometimes you are not their choice or they don't have to be your, your choice. Give yourself permission for all of that. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you again. Take care, Danae. This has been You Should Know. Don't forget to leave us a thumbs up and a comment about what you learned today. We're so glad you stopped by. And as always, if you'd like to reach out to us, email us at youshouldknowwithdanae at gmail.com. We'll see you next time.